in this part of the lecture we'll discuss what are the projected effects of climate change now we all know that climate change can have severe consequences most historic changes in the temperature of the lower atmosphere took place over thousands of years now what makes the current problem so urgent is the fact that we are facing a rapid projected increase in the average temperatures and this basically gives us very little time to deal with all the projected effects of such a major change in the climate of the earth now according to ipcc a warming of 2 degrees celsius and its effect on global climate appears to be inevitable because we have already waited too long to prevent some degree of change having ignored all the warnings that we were being given by our environment now one study that was done in 2009 what what it said was that even if greenhouse gas emissions are stopped now some effects such as increased rot or rise in sea level will be felt at least for 1000 years now uh, a temperature increase of 2 degree celsius is probably manageable but as the temperatures increase beyond this level the harmful effects and the cost of resulting irreversible climate change will be very rapid and if at all what the scientist says is that if at all there is an increase of 4 degree celsius in the temperature then the human civilization that exists currently will stop existing so let us have a quick look at some of the projected effects that climate change can have first of all we'll start our discussion with the change in precipitation patterns now the climate change associated with global warming are also projected to lead to changes in precipitation patterns and this would happen across the globe it will happen in the polar regions it will happen in the temperate regions it will happen in the equatorial regions so increase in precipitation is predicted in polar and subpolar regions just try to understand this that in polar or subpolar regions there would be an increase in rainfall and when we talk about the middle latitudes in middle latitudes there will be decreased precipitation then when we talk about the equatorial regions it is predicted that the rainfall would increase so there will be an increase in rainfall in the polar regions in the middle latitudes there will be an decrease and in the equatorial regions again there will be an increase in rainfall now changes in precipitation patterns are expected to increase the chances of both drought and floods in many of the areas of the world so if you just have a look at this particular picture you would understand how exactly it is changing so if we just have a look at this diagram versus this diagram now here you see two terms one is rcp 2.6 and one is rcp 8.5 so first of all try to understand what is the meaning of 2.6 and 2.5 uh, 8.5 and what is the meaning of this term rcp because this basically term is important mainly because in all its reports ipcc uses this particular term so try to understand the meaning of this so this basically stands for representative concentration pathway or pathways so rcp stands for representative concentration pathways now you have to understand that this pathway or this representative concentration pathway is talking about concentration of the greenhouse gases it is talking about the concentration of the greenhouse gases so what ipcc has done it has taken four pathways depending on what concentration of greenhouse gases can have what kind of effect so rcp 2.6 is there apart from that we have rcp 4.5 we have rcp 6 and we have rcp 8.5 so rcp 4.5 and 6 are mid pathways you can say the rcp 8.5 is the extreme condition and rcp 2.6 is the best case scenario you can say in a way so what we are saying is let's say that all the rules and laws that we make to combat the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere if we are taking into account very strict rules and regulations in that case we say that this is rcp 2.6 
that is this is the best case scenario that we can think of rcp 8.5 basically represents the worst case scenario that if we do not take any steps if the world do, does not take any step and we let everything take its course as it takes its course currently in that case you would have rcp 8.5 so just try to understand the effect that rcp 8.5 would have as against rcp 2.6 so so if you look at this particular picture you see that this we are talking about the change in average precipitation 1986 to 2005 to 2081 to 2100 now first of all look at this first picture which is the best case scenario in that manner you would see that most of the change is very much wide in this case you would see that most of the change lies in this particular range that is the change that is happening is very mild if you see everything is fine but if we take rcp 8.5 into account what we are looking at here is that there is a drastic change that is change or increase in rainfall by up to 50% in the polar regions and in the equatorial regions right and if you look at the temperate regions as we discussed in the temperate regions the change will be very high and if you see that this these would become the areas which may start getting affected by droughts this all will become areas which will start getting affected by droughts so there will be severe floods there will be severe droughts the change in normal precipitation pattern could be as high as 50% and it can be as low as up to 30 to 40% in the temperate regions so this is what we are discussing now the next effect that we will see of climate change would be droughts so according to one report that was published by a set of researchers in nasa they said that by 2059 up to 45% of world's land area could experience extreme droughts so we are saying that up to 45% of all the land that is there would experience extreme droughts southern australia has been in the grip of a very severe drought for more than a decade now now long term climate changes can contribute to prolonged drought droughts as the drought increases and spreads the growth of trees and other plants decline which reduces the removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so this is one potential problem that we would face and not only this the forest and the grassland fires would start to increase and this would also add more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere now the scientists working on climate change they have also projected that these combined effects from increased droughts will also speed up the warming of the atmosphere so all these things we would see with in the case of droughts now one very very important factor that we already have discussed and we all always discuss whenever we see any discussion with regards to climate change would be melting of ice and snow so more and more ice and snow will start to melt if you look at this particular picture you will understand that what already has been happening that this is this was a picture taken in 2011 and this was the extent if you look at this this was the extent that we had in 1979 so since 1979 and between 2011 we have already seen so much of decrease in the ice caps in the north pole so climate change is happening and we all have to understand that all the effects of climate change is very devastating for us so climate models have predicted that atmospheric warming would be the most severe in the world's polar region the light color ice that we have and the snow that we have in these regions they help to cool the earth and how they do this is by reflecting the incoming solar radi radiation now the effect of melting of such ice and snow exposes the darker land and the sea areas and this darker land and sea areas actually absorbs more solar energy and this would cause faster warming of the polar regions 
because what happens is less solar energy is reflected away from earth's surface more is being absorbed and this would melt more snow and more ice and obviously will cause further more warming of the area so one report that was released by ipcc also said that arctic atmospheric temperatures have already risen almost twice as fast as the average temperature in the rest of the world in the past 50 55 years not only this all the soot the carbon black that is generated in north america and the europe and the russian federation this is also darkening the arctic ice and this is lessening the ability to reflect the sunlight so as a result the summer sea ice in the arctic is disappearing and it is disappearing faster than the scientists thought it would now one thing also to note is the fact that loss of arctic sea ice affects the global air and water circulation patterns now that's why what it could do is it could reduce the long term average rainfall and snowfall in the already dry and arid regions of the world it can also affect food productivity in several areas by reducing the availability of irrigation water now apart from that the mountain glaciers also play a vital role by storing water as ice during the cold wet seasons and releasing it slowly to the streams during the warmer dry seasons so these kind of glaciers are very major source of water for very large number of rivers the mountain glaciers can shrink or expand depending on the weather conditions but what we have seen that in the past 25 years many of the world's mountain glaciers have been melting and shrinking at accelerated rates now one report by geological survey in the us in 2009 reported that 99% of alaska's glaciers are shrinking in 2007 scientists estimated that 80% of mountain glaciers in south america will be gone by 2025 and as this occurs millions of people in the countries such as let's say uh, bolivia or peru or ecuador in south america who rely on the melt water from the glaciers for irrigation and hydropower could face severe food and power shortages similar shortages could also threaten billions of people in asia now if the himalayan glaciers and the tibetan plateau if these glaciers start to shrink you can say 40% of the people in the asian region would be affected so this is huge and if we talk about our own himalayan glaciers they also uh, receive a huge amount of soot and brown carbon from the industries in the north india now so if you just want to see an example what could happen you look at this picture of 1941 and this is of one of the inlet glaciers in alaska and the same picture you try and compare with this picture it is also of the same glacier in alaska and this picture was taken in 2004 so between 1941 and 2004 you can see that all this region that you have all this region that you have this basically already is gone if you look at this now this is completely a water body so the melting of glaciers is a huge problem that we are looking at in in the entire world and that's why this is another effect that we see as a cause of global warming now apart from this another issue that we see which is related to climate change and global warming is the rising sea levels now the world's average sea level is most likely to rise by 0.8 to 2 meters during this century now and this rise basically is due to the expansion of sea water as it warms and to the melting of land based ice especially in the mountain top glaciers so now this rise in sea level will be more dramatic if let's say areas like greenland or antarctica they continue to melt at the pace that they are doing right now now one more study that was done it was done back in 2009 and it estimated that a loss of just 15% of greenland's ice sheet would cause a devastating 1 meter rise in sea level now 
this 1 meter again as we just discussed in case of temperature 1 meter may seem to be a very small increase but you have to understand that it would threaten millions of people around the world and especially when you talk about India all the coastal regions of India will also be threatened if even if there is a 1 meter rise which is a huge rise so to say. So if such a rise happens this is projected to threaten at least one third of the world's coastal estuaries, wetlands and coral reefs. So we would also see something called as coral bleaching and this would also result out of rising sea levels. Now and not only this if you look at the next point it would also contaminate freshwater coastal aquifers with salt water disrupt many of the world's coastal fisheries, flood low-lying barrier islands and cause gently sloping coastlines to erode and retreat inland. Also, the projected sea level rise would submerge low-lying islands around the world. Flooding in some of the world's largest cities located on the coast would displace at least 150 million people. So these kind of problems we are looking at with rising sea level and if you just have a look at this particular picture you would understand how the sea level has been rising in last just 25 years or so. So starting from 1993 if we take the level of 1993 as zero in that case you see that already by the end of 2017 we have seen a rise of 80 millimeter or so to say. 8 centimeter rise has already been seen. So this is something that will be accelerated if we do not stop the emission of greenhouse gases and we do not take measures against global warming. So something like this has already been seen and with this major areas, major coastal areas of the world will get displaced. They will face far devastating effects than we can ever imagine. And if such a displacement happens, it could lead to massive scarcity of food, it could lead to massive forced migration and this would create a huge problem worldwide. That's why climate change has to be seen as a th serious threat to international and national security for many of the countries. Not only this, another aspect that we need to discuss is extreme weather conditions. So as per the projections done by IPCC, the projected climate change will increase the incidence of extreme weather such as heat waves, severe droughts and which could kill large number of people, reduce crop production and expand diseases. So extreme weather will become much more frequent. Flooding or cyclones, hurricanes, all these kind of effects will be seen much more, will become much more pronounced than they are currently. At the same time, because a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture, other areas will experience extreme flooding from heavy and prolonged precipitation. So we are talking about the fact that droughts will increase, floods will increase and cyclones could also increase. So all this will lead to devastating problems altogether. So there have been many researches that have been done, many studies that have been done and they have said that the size and the strength of tropical storms in the oceans, especially the Atlantic and the Indian oceans will start to increase. Next, the food production of the world will also get hampered. So the crop productivity is projected to increase slightly in the middle to high latitudes with moderate atmospheric warming, but decrease if warming goes too far. Because what will happen is, that the middle latitudes which currently are not very suitable for agriculture because of the temperatures that they possess, the temperatures since they will be warmer, these middle latitudes will start to show more food productivity. But at the same time what will also happen is that once you start to increase the amount of heat or the warming that is happening in these areas, soil will also start to get affected. And with soil getting affected obviously what will happen is agriculture will start to come down. So according to IPCC, food will be plentiful for a while because of the longer growing season in north regions. 
बट द साइंटिस्ट है टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टी सम टू हंड्रेड टू सिक्स हंड्रेड मिलियन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पुअरेस्ट एंड मोस्ट वर्ल्डरेबल पीपल कुड फेस माल न्यूट्रिशन एंड स्टारवेशन ड्यू टू द इफेक्ट ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज ऑन एग्रीकल्चरल सिस्टम सो दिस इज द इवेंचुअलिटी दैट वी आर लुकिंग एट दैट फॉर अ वाइल एग्रीकल्चर मे स्टार्ट टू शो बेटर रिजल्ट बट एट द सेम टाइम विद इंक्रीजिंग वार्मिंग ऑफ द एटमोसफेयर वट विल ऑब्जर्व इज दैट एग्रीकल्चर विल स्टार्ट टू शो अ स्टीप डिक्लाइन एंड दिस इज समथिंग दैट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू हैपन बाय टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टी देन द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट वी शुड डिस्कस इज अबाउट हेल्थ नाउ इफ यू लुक एट सम ऑफ द डेटा बिटवीन टू थाउजेंड थर्टी टू टू थाउजेंड एंड फिफ्टी क्लाइमेट चेंज इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू कॉज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एडिशनल डेथ्स पर ईयर फॉर माल न्यूट्रिशन मलेरिया डायरिया हीट स्ट्रेस एक्सेट्रा द डायरेक्ट डैमेज कॉस्ट टू हेल्थ इज एस्टिमेटेड टू बी बिटवीन टू टू फोर मिलियन बिलियन डॉलर पर एन एम बाय टू थाउजेंड थर्टी एरियाज विथ वीक हेल्थ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड दिस बेसिकली वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज विल बी द लीस्ट एबल टू कोप विदाउट असिस्टेंस टू प्रिपेयर एंड रिस्पॉन्ड सो हेल्थ वाइज यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड देर आर मेनी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ हेल्थ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एक्सट्रीम हीट सिंस ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इज हैपनिंग देर विल बी एक्सट्रीम हीट एंड विथ एक्सट्रीम हीट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट विल हैपन इज कार्डियो वास्कुलर डिजीजेज विल इंक्रीज रेस्पिरेटरी डिजीजेज विल इंक्रीज एंड हाई टेम्परेचर्स विल ऑल्सो रेज द लेवल ऑफ ओजोन एंड अदर पॉल्यूटेंट्स इन द एयर एंड दैट्स वाई वॉट विल सी इज दैट देर विल बी अ राइज इन दीज काइंड ऑफ डिजीजेज ऑल्सो द पॉलेंस एंड अदर एरो एलर्जेंट्स द लेवल्स ऑफ देम ऑल्सो विल बी हाइयर इन द एक्सट्रीम हीट एंड दिस कैन ट्रिगर आस्थमा which can affect around 300 million people worldwide so that's why we are talking about the fact that this every aspect of this particular event of global warming will be harmful then apart from that the loss that we may have due to natural disasters and variable rainfall so variable rainfall pattern we already discussed some of the natural disasters like cyclone we already discussed so more than half the people of the world's population live within 60 kilometers of the sea people may be forced to move which in turn heightens the risk of range of health effects from mental disorders to communicable diseases so all these kind of problems might be seen increasingly variable rainfall patterns are likely to affect the supply of fresh water a lack of safe water is compromised and then increasing the risk of diarrheal diseases which kills over 5 lakh children under the age of 5 years every year also floods are also increasing in frequency and intensity and this is something that we have started to see in india as well the frequency and intensity of extreme precipitation is expected to continue to increase throughout the current century so all these kind of variable patterns or in rainfall and natural disasters would be seen and this all will have an effect on human health then now in 2015 the who executive board endorsed a new work plan on climate change and health and this included all these points that we have listed out here first was partnerships what is the meaning of partnerships partnership basically means to coordinate with the partner agencies within the un system and to ensure that health is properly represented in the climate change agenda so what we are saying is to coordinate with partner agencies within the un framework and ensure that health is properly represented in the climate change agenda right then apart from that the next one is to raise the awareness so for example we are talking about the fact that we need to provide and disseminate information on the threats that climate change presents to human health 
and the opportunities to promote the health while cutting carbon emissions so what is the meaning of raising awareness to provide and disseminate information on the threats that climate change presents to human health and opportunities to promote health while cutting carbon emissions so this was the second part then apart from that the third is science and evidence meaning to coordinate the reviews of the scientific evidence on the link between climate change and health and to develop a global research agenda so if we have to discuss this you can say that to coordinate reviews of the scientific evidence on the link between climate change and health and develop a global research agenda and then finally the last part of the same was to support for implementation of public health response to climate change so what is the meaning of this so you can make a note of this as well to assist countries to build capacity to reduce health vulnerabilities to climate change and promote health while reducing carbon emission so this was the plan that was included in that particular 2015 work plan on climate change and health by who so this part of information i have directly taken from the who website so this can be a very important factor with when you have a discussion between what is the relation between health and climate change now one more thing that we already sort of have discussed is about tropical cyclones so it appears likely that the rising tropical ocean temperatures associated with global warming will lead to an increase in intensity of tropical cyclone so extreme weather conditions we already discussed and there only the same topic of tropical cyclones can also be discussed now the next topic that we need to discuss is ecological consequences of global warming now to start with let me take you with few examples first example that we have here is of polar bear the story of polar bear and the effect of global climate change on polar bear is well established and well documented whether in the print media or on the electronic media on social media everywhere you find this now as the arctic sea ice starts to retreat polar bears have also to try to exploit alternative food sources and this has become a major issue for polar bears and it will become extinct if we don't take action against this so this is one example apart from polar bears another example that we can take is of corals and this is one species of corals which are called as acropora cervicoris this is called as acropora this is a kind of coral and coral bleaching is something which is now known worldwide now this basically this, when you talk about this animal this is also in a decline almost everywhere for a combination of reasons now for example we can talk about the warming waters corals are very sensitive to changes in the ocean temperatures as the increase in ocean temperatures start to happen they will start to die now this particular species which used to be widespread in the caribbean region now it's it has started to be restricted to a very small area and this most likely is happening due to the effect of global warming not only this if i take another example this is an example of orange spotted filefish so this is orange spotted filefish now 
the file fish basically dwells in the coral areas or in the coral reef habitat now it is totally dependent on coral reef now as we have already started to see a decline in coral reefs this has also started to threaten the life of this particular kind of fish so this fish actually is very highly sensitive to warm water already what has happened is this animal has gotten extinct in japan when the ocean temperature in and around japan started to warm up and in 1988 it was declared as extinct in japan another example if i have to take you can take example of quiver tree quiver tree now this particular tree is endemic to the areas which are west of south africa and namibia in the fifth assessment report of ipcc which was published in 2014 so what has started to happen in these areas where it is endemic and it was reported in the fifth assessment report of ipcc in 2014 that these trees are not able to grow and disperse quickly enough to keep up with the fast changing climate so this is another example and these four examples that i have taken these are just one or you can say very few of the examples that we have there are many amphibians for example uh, some varieties of frogs which are very very sensitive to temperature and they have already become extinct they are not even endangered anymore they have become extinct so global warming and climate change have the potential to alter the biological systems and more specifically if i have to say so the changes to the near surface temperatures will likely influence the ecosystem functioning and the biodiversity of plants animals and other forms of life so the current geographical ranges of plants and animal species have been established by adaptation as we have already discussed over a very long period of time so these small changes in climatic pattern that have happened over millions of years or at least hundreds of years this change now is happening very rapidly and because this change is happening very rapidly this becomes one of the reasons why many of the plants and animals can go extinct now as global warming alters the patterns of these time scales there will be a very short period of time available for these plants and animals to change themselves or adapt themselves to these kind of changes and that's why many of the species will start to become extinct so even if the global temperatures rise by another 1.5 to 2.5 degrees celsius let's say by even 2100 then in that case also a large amount of species of plants and animals will go extinct and if at all we do not take appropriate measures and the level of temperature rise is by 4.5 degrees celsius in that case what is estimated is that approximately 40% of all the species that we have they will be extinct by the year 2100 so a 40% extinction rate would likely lead to a major change in the food web within the ecosystem and would have very highly destructive impact on the function of ecosystem not only this if we talk about the seasonal variations the surface warming of temperature regions is likely to lead changes in various seasonal processes as well in high latitude ecosystems changes in the seasonal patterns of ice threaten predators such as polar bears as we discussed walruses both species rely on broken ice for their hunting activities a combination of warming water decreased ice and changes in ocean salinity and circulation is likely to lead to reduction or redistribution in populations of algae and plankton not only this the other likely impact on the environment include the destruction of many coastal wetlands salt marshes and mangrove salt swamps then the tropical forests are also disappearing as optimal condensation levels move to a higher elevation in response to warming temperatures in the lower atmosphere so all these kind of effects will start to see so what we are discussing here is the fact that let's say this was the height at which the condensation was happening initially 
Now, for condensation, you need a low temperature. For condensation to happen, you need low temperatures. Now that the lower part of the atmosphere have started to warm, in that case, this level where condensation should have happened, this would increase in height. And this concentration will happen at a higher height than it used to happen before. So that's why the tropical forest which are very much dependent on the fact that this condensation should happen at a lower height, this will have a serious effect in all these kind of plants and all these kind of tropical forest. So all these things have been seen. Also if we take the example of coral reefs, the rising ocean temperatures increase the tendency for coral bleaching and they also raise the likelihood of greater physical damage by progressively more destructive tropical cyclone. Now, in many areas, coral is also under stress from increased ocean acidification, marine pollution, runoff from agricultural fertilizer and physical damage by boat anchors and dredging. So, even this part was very much in use in last two years. So, all these kind of factors are leading to coral bleaching apart from warming of the oceans. One more example that we can take, the ecological consequences, is of the migratory animals. Now, what happens is, one, while these animals attempt to relocate to regions with more favorable climatic conditions, they are likely to encounter impediments such as highways, walls, artificial waterways and other man-made structures. So, so, this all would hamper the movement of migratory animals to better or you can say more favorable climatic areas. That cannot happen anymore because of all these problems. Now, one last problem that we would face is the fact that Warmer temperatures are also likely to affect the in spread of infectious diseases. How? Because if you talk about the geographical ranges of the carriers of these diseases, such as let's say mosquitoes, insects, rodents, etc., they are very much limited by climatic conditions. Now, as you provide the warmer com conditions to them, which currently prevail only in the tropical areas, now this area will expand and it will start to expand towards the temperate regions as well. So, that's why we would start to see the spread of infectious diseases all over the mid-latitudes as well. So, this is another ecological consequence of global warming.